Welcome to the ship room. You're on the air. <laughs> when the Apollo 14 mission needed to build the first tires to ever touch the surface of the moon, they called Goodyear. For the next 14 minutes, I'm joined by the CIO of that very same company, Sherry Newbert. Sherry, welcome to the ship room. Thanks it's so great me. to have you here. Mm -hmm. Great to be here. A lot of companies look at being spread out and distributed like it, and they see it as a challenge. But I've heard you talk about how you use it as a strength for IT. Our teams are global, so while the team itself might be located in multiple countries, it is still one team. And so one of the things that we do is we use tools like the Microsoft tools, for example, for collaboration. Uh, as a, an IT professional, it's my responsibility to make sure that our associates have the tools that they need that they can connect and, and collaborate and basically co-create. And you were telling me in, in how many days you're about to roll out Teams across Goodyear? We took the same approach with Teams as we did with our original uh, 365 implementation, which was lots and lots of planning. We did a pilot of about 2,000 of our users. A pilot of 2,000? That's a big pilot. Yes. The pilot kept growing over time, and uh, and now we are very close. We will, in, in, a, in a matter of 14 days, or over 14 days, we will roll it out to all 35,000 of our users. There's intense user pull to be on Teams. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that happened with the pilot is, you know, if you were in the pilot, you wanted to invite your team, and then oh, somebody sure. who was on your team happened to be on another team, and then they wanted to uh, be in the pilot as well. Okay, so having grown up in Akron, right. and oh, now you're... You're not pronouncing it correctly. Oh, you gotta tell me how to say it. <laughs> Akron. Oh, so the accent's on the end. Yes, it's okay, not so, Akron. Okay, let me, let me get it right here now. Okay. So having grown up in Akron... No. <laughs> how do you say Akron. Akron, Akron. Like run, are you Oh, Akron. Akron. There's a U there instead of an O. There is not. So having grown up in Akron, okay. and now you're a senior executive at the biggest company in town, I have a question about King James. Okay, great. And I'm sure you get this a lot, but are you impressed with the way that he simultaneously ruled Scotland, England, and Ireland? I read an article about how you um, and how Goodyear is really good at listening to employee feedback. Yes. You know, so when you get feedback from, from your employees about how they want to use modern technologies, how do you evaluate which tools and then deliver to those users and to your employees? We run this survey periodically and it covers a lot of different elements, including the tools that are used by our associates. And about five or six years ago, we started seeing more and more dissatisfaction with the tools. Uh, so that caused us to go out and again, survey the landscape, see what options were available. And we started doing pilots of different technology. And we also look at, you know, what are people using on their phones? What are the apps that they're using that we don't provide to them? And then how can we incorporate that kind of technology into the suite that we make available? Our people are so hungry to have things that make them more efficient. Just looking at what they're using is actually some of the best research I think that we can do as leaders. Yeah, they find a way to be efficient. Right. You want them to be able to use the tools that you provide them. You want them to you know, use tools that are secure and mm -hmm. sanctioned. And so it's really important as the function of IT to, to watch how people work and to see how their needs evolve so that you can ensure you provide them with the right tools. You know, inside of Microsoft 365, we've worked hard to balance this empowerment with security. You know, so we talk about how do you provide that modern workplace that is loved by users mm -hmm. and trusted by IT. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's been hard to do both historically. The most important thing is that the associates need to want the tools. And if they want Pull. the tools and the tools provide them with the functionality that they need, then they're willing to endure whatever security uh, requirements go along with those tools. That is the team's phone. Oh, nice. Uh, hello, welcome to the ship room. I am uh, here with Sherry Newport. Good day. Good day. It is I, Captain Otto von Struvengleidenheimer Flaw the third. Do you have a question for Sherry? As an employee of Goodyear and a noted blimp enthusiast, I wanted to test your knowledge of the blimps and zeppelins operated by Goodyear. Let's go. Okay, hold on. I thought Zeppelin. I thought Goodyear had a blimp. <laughs> oh, Brad. <laughs> your blimp ignorance, a oh, uh, blimp ignorance, we call it, is so charming. A, a blimp is basically just a balloon with a propeller on it. But a zeppelin has a metal frame that makes it rigid and more maneuverable. 
Is that right, sir? That, well, it's semi-rigid. So we there are three different types of airships. So there is the original airship that we started in the early 1900s. There's a rigid airship, and then there is the semi-rigid airship that has an envelope uh, as well uh, as rigid structures. And those are the blimps that we operate today. We continue to call them blimps, but they are, in fact, airships. Just splendid. I know you'll do well on this, indeed. I'm going to give you... Mm, a list of airship names, and you tell me whether or not that ship has ever been a part of the Goodyear fleet. Hmm? Based on your score, we'll renew your blimp access for the year. That way you won't have to do anything dreadful like ride to work in a car. <laughs> Here we go. Rainbow. No. The Icarus Four. No. The Spirit of Akron. Absolutely true. Had to be. Revenge. No. The Wingfoot 2. Yes. The Spirit of Europe. No. The Spirit of Alderaan. Should be yes, but no. <laughs> Goose 1. No. Goose 2. No. Fake. The Wind Beneath Our Wings. No. All right. That's nearly everything for me. All right, so how did I do? Am I recertified? Your blip privileges will indeed be renewed, Sherry. But before I go, since becoming CIO in 2015, you have led a lot of change. What are some initiatives that you are most proud of thus far, and what is coming up next? I think the thing that I'm most proud of is uh, the IT organization's ability to be agile. And the idea with being agile is that you can capitalize on an opportunity at any given moment. And so, yeah, we've led a lot of change over the last uh, four or five years, but we have 60 years of legacy IT in our organization. And so one of the things that um, we have to consider as uh, the function of IT is when to change and when not to change. And, uh, and that involves agility. So for us, it's you know really surveying the landscape, making sure that we understand what are the opportunities out there, uh, and then those sweet spots in time when it is time to change and making that change. So obviously, you know, we did that with uh, Microsoft 365 and number of years ago. Yeah. Um, we're moving to Teams very soon as well. Um, other things that we're doing is cloud adoption again at the right moment in time. I'm curious, as you, as you shifted to the cloud for all your productivity, what has the feedback been from your user community? And what is the impact to your team been? Your, does your team feel like they are now contributing more? It's a previous application we had for 20 years. And so we were very mature with that application. Um, we had over a thousand developers on that application. And I think there was, uh, within the technical community, there was some concern that maybe there wouldn't be work for them. Um, but that's not the case. So now the technical community is doing different things. So um, I mentioned earlier about doing chatbots. Yeah. That's one of the things that, really uh, on. that happens in the team that used to manage mail. The work has changed um, and probably more innovative. more innovative, more interesting kind of work. In terms of the associates who consume you know, the workplace products, we don't have issues with people resisting change. We have issues with people resisting stagnation. Yeah. They want to move. They want to get the latest and greatest. And so they like the, um, the, the evergreen nature of the products that we give them to now. Yeah. Um, they can access their uh, information anywhere, whether it's you know on a, a tablet or their phone or the PC that we provide or something that they have at home, and they really appreciate that flexibility. So one of the things that is near and dear to my heart that I know is also near and dear to you is, is mentoring and helping other women to grow in the industry and inside a good year. What advice do you give these women when you mentor them? The first thing is uh, don't leave it up to anyone else to decide what you can or cannot do. If you want to be a princess, be a princess. If you want to be a data scientist, be a data scientist or be both. So my advice is to take control of your career, uh, take control of your career path, and to learn as much as you can from everyone you can. Talk about the other things like the value that you see of the business of driving this kind of diversity 
inclusion into your business, especially for a global company like, like Goodyear? Yeah, diversity is important to us because everyone consumes our product, so we want the people who are designing our products, the people who are designing our services, and the people who are serving our customers and consumers to be just like them. So it's important for us to have a diverse workforce, and uh, having that diverse workforce is what enables us to really innovate the way that we do. Yeah, we both build product for the entire world. Absolutely. If you don't have the world represented in your teams, how are you really going to understand what their needs are? Mm -hmm. I think there's such a business value, it's such a mm -hmm. core imperative for business on diversity and inclusion. So the whole time we've been talking, we have a, a, a sh the shipper has its own machine learning bot that listens and it analyzes the conversation to determine the 12 most relevant questions to end the show with. <laughs> When you see a race car do a burnout, are you impressed or do you cringe? I'm impressed. Does it bother you that humans invented wheel the 6,000 years ago, but we haven't come up with another use other than wheels? It's wild. Have you ever suggested changing the name of Goodyear to like Great Year or Awesome Year? Absolutely not. What's the best thing that's ever been vulcanized? Rubber um, or Leonard Nimoy? <laughs> What does the average person misunderstand about blimp pilots? It's uh, one of the most sought after jobs. So 1487, a good year or a great year? Great year. You ever done that thing where you crawl inside of a really big tire or someone pushes you down a hill? I have done that. Well, Sherry, it's been awesome to have you here on the ship room. Great Thank to you be for stopping here. by. Thank you. But before you go, tell people where they can find out more about you and the work you're doing at Goodyear. Uh, at Goodyear.com. Well, thank you, Sherry. Thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll see you next time on The Ship Room. This is Brad Anderson. Hey, everyone. Now that you've watched this episode of The Ship Room, I really recommend that you go to microsoft365.com shift and learn how to get started deploying Windows 10 and Office 365.